Hey, thanks for listening. Hope you're having a good one. It's Rock 100.5. Jason Bailey, Southside Steve, Tim Andrews, their Brandy on the hotline, author, chef, television personality, probably the most recognizable of the celebrity chefs, right? I mean, I think so. Definitely the most outspoken. They're probably the best to listen to or watch on TV, at least in my opinion. Most he's, entertaining. Yeah, he's, he's my favorite because I, I have these forced down my throat by my wife because she's a foodie, but he travels <laughs> around and does cool stuff, and he's not always eating something gross. Like, you know, he's not eating like, like man versus food or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you know, I don't want to see the gross stuff. I don't want to see the eyeball or eating a, a, an antelope penis or any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> they always say a good antelope penis a day keeps the doctor away. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, of course, you know him from Parts Unknown, uh, the CNN original series, No Reservations, which still is there on the Travel Channel. Let's welcome to the program Anthony Bourdain. How are you today, Anthony? Good. How are you guys doing? Excellent, sir. You're coming to town July 11th. For now, this is a live gig. This is uh, this is at the Fox oh, Theater. Yeah. This is close to the bone. So we're not talking about your TV shows. We're talking about you live in front of people, face to face, answering questions and having a good time. Correct? Uh, yes. And it will be. Uh, don't bring the kids. It will be absolutely filthy. <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, why? Why do chef like I like Gordon Ramsay? Okay. Uh-huh. Uh Why do chefs cuss so much? Because they're working in a military uh, in a military hierarchy, uh, they're under extraordinary pressure, and they're working in a grand oral tradition, much like the Marine Corps. You know where uh, there's a tradition of colorful language, shall we say, and expressing oneself in a free and frank way. Mm-hmm. So, so in the kitchen, and we've all, I think, been in the kitchen as a dishwasher as a kid, mm-hmm. or bussing tables, or on the line, or whatnot. Western Sizzling Steakhouse. So in the in the in the restaurant business, it's oh. different than the real world, where certain rules just don't apply. Those HRPC rules don't apply, right? Hey, you know, it, 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 things have changed a lot. I mean, it's become a much more professional business now. Uh, there's an actual uh, expectation that you might make a living. Um, so. You know, uh, things have changed somewhat. You know, snorting cocaine through uncooked penne, you know, in the middle of a shift is probably unacceptable behavior these days. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, Anthony, because that's just wrong. Hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not just... good. That's great. I think it's finally been figured out that that's probably not good for either the career or the food. First off, I want to talk about what a uh, an easy man you are to look at. A lot of these chefs are not attractive men. You are an attractive man, so I can handle my wife being into you. Uh, uh, yeah, we're both six four. I got to know how much do you weigh? Uh, these days about one seventy five. Right, you, that's why a, you look so damn good. No, you just recently lost a lot of weight. Yeah, didn't you? yeah, yeah. I'm doing. I, I don't know how it happened, but I, 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 the last thing in the world I would ever expect to do. I've never until a couple of years ago never been in a gym. I hate people who go to the gym, but I'm into this jujitsu thing. The whole family's into it. It's become like a, an addiction and. Uh, it's completely an accident. That wasn't the point, but uh, I'm in pretty good shape. Well, it's gotten you in great shape, yeah, because I'm in a situation where I was like at 237 at six four and a half, and I've gotten down to 217, and I was looking at your body, and I'm like, wait, that dude's six four, and he's, he looks good, but, man, 175, that's that's not easy to get to. Anthony. Well, I work real hard every morning trying to keep some 23-year-old college wrestler from choking me unconscious. <laughs> well, there you go. You know, he, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> here's, the, here's the issue that my partner has. Is oh, that, I've got a huge issue, yeah. Is that that he's 50 his wife is like 16 i'm like you i look very good though anthony we're both attractive men and she doesn't have a job and she said the only thing in life that she wants to do is be anthony bourdain's assistant and i remembered somebody telling me that a while back and you know as we were talking about you earlier and kind of setting up that you're coming on the program uh you know i said was that your wife that said that i said that's such an odd request in life that all is you want is to be Anthony Bourdain's assistant. Is that something? Is there a job opening for that, Anthony? No, but it's not a bad gig. I mean, you know, I sit around with my with my coworkers and friends every year. We drink beer and say, where do we want to go this year, and what do we want to do when we get there? Mm-hmm. Well, Anthony, I, because we're talking to you on air, I, I need you to memorize Southside Steve. You got that? <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's writing it down. He's writing it down. Write it down, Anthony. Let's follow each other. I'm going to go at Bourdain. But, no, I I need to get her back there to meet you. But if she could even – if you could do a 30-second interview and yay or nay it. But she would be great. She's a nutritionist out of Auburn University, and she's the most fantastic cook ever. And she's very well-traveled. So, yeah, I'm pushing my wife on you right now. Oh, that's nice. He's, he's pimping her out to you. Yeah. Uh, with, with was the, that a click? With, no. uh, what, with Parts Unknown, you got what? the Season 5 you got coming up uh, in April, correct? Uh, we're 
are just finishing up uh, uh, this, this Sunday is the last episode of this season, and then the next season will start airing in the fall. Okay. Do you have any plans for spinoffs of you know the parts unknown? You know, no reservations, kind of the same kind of premise. But do you have spinoffs? I mean, you do. I love. By the way, I love the live stuff. I love the live Q and A stuff and the interactive audience, mm-hmm. and that's very hot right now for celebrities to go out there and talk talk to their fans. I mean, I think that's fantastic. But- it, it, it's fun, but it's, a, it's hard. I mean, it's a lot like stand-up comedy. I mean, sure. You, you, you know, if you're standing up there alone in front of a couple of thousand people, uh, you know, you better have something funny and entertaining to talk but about. But we're going to laugh at anything. Because yeah. we're all fans of yours, so you got that going for you, thank God. <laughs> do you, do you, it, it, it should be fun. Do you have spinoff uh, television series uh, in the works? Not that I'm going to be on. I mean, uh, I produce a bunch of other shows uh, uh, for other networks, and some. I mean, I'm working on projects as a producer, but I'm on TV, you know, quite enough. Thank you very much. I have no <laughs> no desire to do anymore. Yeah, but what I've seen, what what I've well, seen uh, with you, you know, ever since for over the years with Anthony Bourdain, is that now because of this celebrity? I mean, you know, your 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 pop culture now you're not just looked at as a celebrity chef you're not just put into that category of the rest of the celebrity chefs. yeah it's been a while since i cooked uh professionally i mean i, I cook for my daughter now but but but, but that's it and uh, you know we did a spin-off series from the reservations when i was on travel channel called the layover and it was not fun for me there was actually only one golden moment on that entire series it was bringing alton brown to the claremont lounge which oh. was really one of my proudest moments in television You've never seen a man look more uncomfortable. Oh, he was he was freaked out by Blondie. You could totally tell. Blondie. Oh, man. it was it was awesome. But I mean, I figured I was doing good for the world. Well, Anthony, that was just wrong. I mean, you're taking somebody to it. To, I mean, seriously, you're taking somebody to a strip club where gray hair is the norm. <laughs> hair, that hair is, is awesome. even that the is norm. The finest bar in the land. Oh, it's great. PBR flowing, <laughs> hot women. Well, sort of. It's nothing kind like of. it's nothing like getting a lap dance from a woman that's got bruises all yeah. over her thighs. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's the best. It's unique. There's no doubt about that. Hey, you're going to what South Korea in season five, Madagascar, and Miami. <laughs> well, his last episode is uh, Beirut. Yep, uh, but I, this, this uh, come, upcoming episode is in Beirut. A man of all places. Is that safe? <laughs> Beirut is awesome. Everyone should go there. It's incredible. It's really one of the most amazing cities on earth. And I've been three times. Okay, the first time was a little dodgy. uh, But uh, since then, uh, it's really uh, defies expectations. Where did you where did you get caught up in the rioting? Where where was that at? Well, I got caught up in a war there in 2006. But uh, since then, I've been back twice. And it's really uh, it makes no sense in the best possible way. It's got great food. The people are lovely. And uh uh, can't say enough nice things about it. Have you been back to Nicaragua since your last visit there? Because that was one of the saddest. I you visibly yeah. looked sad and upset on your face in that episode. Because yeah, I'd like garbage. to wait till uh, till Ortega's out. Uh, I was angry at all during a lot of that show. I'd love to go back. I mean, it's a beautiful country. The people are great. The food yeah, is, you know, it's good. Uh, just the the government there is so loathsome. I I think I'm gonna you know wait until they're hopefully gone. What were, what were you sad about? Just the kids not getting food or what? Had to be. Uh, because uh, you know I grew up at a time when Ortega was seen as sort of the uh, you know the uh, happy, uh, morally acceptable liberal socialist alternative to a you know evil uh, right wing uh, uh, you know the dictatorship. And it, it, it sure looked like that. And he turned out to be, you know, just as bad as, you know, anybody else uh, could be. And uh, really an awful, exploitative, corrupt. Um, so in a lot of ways, he just uh, um, it was a reminder of the naivete of my youth. Yeah. Uh, that I ever believed any any good of this guy to see what a what a real pig he's turned into mm. is the sickening. Well, it's uh, July 11th. That's a Saturday night, which is always helpful, especially for people like us that get up for morning radio. Uh, FoxTheater.org is where you can grab tickets. Fox Theater ticket office there as well. Close to the bone is the name of the tour. Anthony Bourdain will be here in town for your viewing pleasure. And you can get tickets, also VIP tickets available, which I'm guessing will be a meet and greet and some food and some drinks and so on and so forth. 250 bucks, that's worth it. Yeah, so there you go. Anthony, appreciate you coming on, my friend. We'll see you, uh, what, next month? Not that far from now. Just a week and a half. Looking forward to it. All right, we'll see you there. Anthony Bourdain right there.